Hello, Mr. Vaney here. Today's lesson is 4.2, Constructing Arithmetic Sequences. And our essential question here is, what is an arithmetic sequence? In uh, the previous lesson, we looked at how to deal with sequences in general, uh, and we uh, worked with recursive rules and explicit rules in order to find specific terms. But we're going to be uh, looking at a more specific type of sequence, and the sequence is called arithmetic. Uh, so let's look at the Explore. You can order tickets for the local theater online. There is a fee of $2 per order. Matinee tickets cost $10 each. The total cost in dollars of ordering N matinee tickets online can be found by using C of N equals 10N plus 2. A uh, table shows the cost for one, two, three, and four tickets. So we have our function, and this is actually an explicit rule if you use the terminology from the previous lesson. So um, to find the cost for one ticket, we're gonna do something like C of one is equal to 10 times one plus two. And when we work that out, C of 1 is going to equal 12. Okay, when you plug in 2, so C of 2 is going to equal 10 times 2 plus 2 will be 22. And for 3, it would be 32. And 4 would be 42. Okay, so that's the cost of the tickets. Uh, when you buy 1, 2, 3, or 4 tickets, the domain is 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you assume that you can buy more than four tickets, then you can put a dot, dot, dot if you like. Uh, and the same thing for the range as well, but we'll just go ahead and list the four range values, 12, 22, 32, and 42. The first term of the sequence is 12 because uh, with our function notation, f, sorry, we're not going to use f here. They're using a different one. So... Uh, using function notation, it would be C of 1 is equal to 12. So our first term is 12 because that's how much it costs for one ticket. And uh, lastly, find the difference between each two consecutive terms in the sequence. So this word consecutive is important because it's going to mean the numbers that are next to each other. So we're taking the second term, subtracting the first term. Right, C of 2 minus C of 1. And then we're taking the third term minus the second term. And we're taking the fourth term minus the third term. So notice that we're, we're subtracting a term minus its previous term. And with all of these, we're always going to get 10. So um, this is just a closer look at uh, some of the sequences, but let's make sense of why we're do answering some of these questions. An arithmetic sequence, uh, in an arithmetic sequence, the difference between consecutive terms is always equal. Uh, the difference written as D is called the common difference. So now we have a name for why we were subtracting those consecutive terms, we call that a common difference. So uh, it's a good idea to look at example A if you just want to look at an extra one and it's already done for you. Let's, let's go ahead and do B. Uh, so this table of value shows the balance in a savings account with a regular, with a regular monthly deposits. Uh, so you can see here that we have um, our domains one, two, three, and four. Oh, and five. Uh, so these are consecutive months. So it's important that you know you you notice it, it's going to be way different if it goes like one month and then three months and then seven months. Uh, so make sure that's consecutive. And the bottom shows that uh, our first term is five thousand, our second term is six thousand, third term is seven thousand, and so on. Okay. So. Um, this ends up being an arithmetic sequence because we have a common difference here, right? Uh, what's nice about arithmetic sequences, 
is they're very predictable and we only use addition or subtraction because the common difference is just going to be what we're adding or subtracting and that is a thousand. Okay, we just do that by taking um, probably the easiest one is going to be taking f of 2 minus f of 1. Right? Or you can take f of 3 minus f of 2. And our f of 1, f of 1 means the first term. The first term is 5,000. Okay. So um, they have us writing the recursive and the explicit rule here. Uh, so the recursive rule is f of 1 equals 5,000. And then um, the next part is the tricky part, if you remember from dealing with these, the previous lesson. We have now the nth term. If you want to find any term, that equals the previous term plus what? What are we adding? What are we adding here to the previous term to get any term we want? We're always adding 1,000. Okay. And so this whole thing right here is our recursive rule. Okay, yes, I know, very long. Uh, we'll get, you'll get the hang of it, and so you, you'll see that it really contains two parts, that f of 1 equals and then that f of n equals. For our explicit rule, uh, we're going to fill in this table of values here. So we got the first term is 5,000. So it's 5,000 plus um, how many of those common differences. And so for n equals 2, our second term we know that it's 6,000 because we start with our first term and we add 1,000, right? Just one time only. And then for our third term, we know it's 7,000, right, from our table up above because we start with 5,000 and we add 1,000 twice, okay? So looking at this pattern, we know that the common difference, which is 1,000, so take a look at this part right here, is always multiplied by some number. And it's if you compare this 0 to our input 1, and you compare this 1 right here to the input 2, what do you notice about this number we're multiplying by 1,000 compared to the input? It's always 1 less. Uh, so if n is... For example, if n is 4, then the number we're multiplying by over here is going to be 3. So it's 1 less. So it's going to be, um, since d is always multiplied by a number equal to n minus 1, right? So if we know what n is, we subtract 1. You can generalize the result from the table. So f of n is going to equal f of 1 plus d times n minus 1. So don't worry if this doesn't make much sense to you because um, we'll, you'll get to practice this some more. But let's just fill this in. So we got uh, f of n equals uh, 5,000. All right, that's our f of 1. Plus our common difference is 1,000 times n minus 1. So our explicit rule is going to be this that I voxed. Okay. So let's try this out on a, on a your turn. Number five. Pause it if you'd like to give it a try. So our f of 1 is 155. Uh, you know that this these are consecutive terms because we have the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. Uh, the common difference is is found by just taking a term like 141 and subtracting its previous term. And so the different thing here is that we actually have a negative common difference. So that's super important that you realize it's a negative. If it's if you leave it as a plus 14 instead of minus 14. Uh, plus 14 makes the sequence bigger, right? You get bigger numbers. So here's our recursive rule. So I'm just going to put an R for recursive. 
you have to start with f of 1, right? You have to say what the first term is. And then every term after that, so the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth term and so on, you have to take the previous term, which is f of n minus 1, and we're going to, whoops, we're not going to add, we're going to subtract, right? We're going to subtract 14. And that's the recursive rule. You'll notice all the recursive rules will have this last part. It says for n greater than or equal to 2. This means that n has to, we have to use 2 or bigger than 2 for our input n since we already have 1. We've already used it. Our explicit rule is just f of n is going to equal our first term. And we're going to be subtracting the common difference every time, right? So we're going to be subtracting 14, but then how many 14s are we going to subtract? Well, it depends on the input. So we're going to multiply 14 by n minus 1. Okay. If you look at the table below, it actually gives us, it, it gives us like a, a general equation for both the recursive and the explicit. Okay, and what they look like. So take a look at if you can understand exactly what all parts of those rules mean. Okay, we've just used it in the last couple examples. And let's look at um, part B. So part B down below here uses or has a sequence 0, 8, 16, 24, 32. So our first term is this one right here, right? So f of 1 equals 0. The common difference is taking any term, we'll take the second term, and subtract the previous term. So we get 8 minus 0 equals 8. So the recursive rule is going to be uh, f of 1 equals 0. And then f of n equals f of n minus 1 Remember that this means the previous term. And then we're going to add whatever that common difference is, so 8. So our recursive rule is this whole thing. And the explicit rule is going to be f of n equals our first term plus our common difference times n minus 1. So notice what I've written in the blanks there is actually the exact same as what I've written in the blanks in the previous rule. So the recursive rule, explicit rule, really uses the same information. Um, it's looking at the sequence a little bit differently, right? Recursive, remember, depends on what previous terms are. Okay, I'd like, to try to, I'd like you to try the your turn. See if you can write the recursive and the explicit rule before you see the solution. So our first term is 6. And our common difference, d, is uh, any term minus the previous term, which is 10. So our, our recursive rule is um, f of n sorry, f of 1 equals 6, and then any term after that, so the second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on, we take that term, sorry, we take the previous term, and then we're going to add our common difference, which is positive 10. So that's recursive. Explicit is to find any term. We're going to start with the first term. And we're going to keep adding 10 a bunch of times, right? Or maybe not a bunch of times if it's a second, third, or fourth term. Um, and then we're going to multiply that common difference by n minus 1. So our last type of example here is relating arithmetic sequences and functions. So now we're going to be looking at real life situations, real world situations, and then also how they look like in a graph. Okay, so let's look at part B, and you'll be able to try the your turn. 
Uh, so the number of seats per row in an auditorium depends on which row it is. The first row has six seats, the second row has nine seats, the third row has 12 seats, and so on. The graph shows the sequence. Uh, so um, it could easily have just given you this description and you have to graph it. So they do graph it for you to try to understand wh why the graph is this way. It is definitely supposed to be a discrete graph. Wouldn't, it would not make sense if it was continuous. Uh, so let's do step one. Let's fill in this table. So row one has six seats. Row two has nine. Row three has 12. Uh, and if we just observe what's happening with this pattern, right? It's definitely a, a sequence and it's definitely an arithmetic sequence because uh, we're adding the same number every time. So it ends up being the fourth row is 15. And if I wanted to, I can find the fifth row, sixth row, and so on. So to find the common difference, take any term and subtract the previous. So nine minus six, which is gonna be three. And I don't really need to do it for the other ones, other terms. So I'm just gonna leave it this way. Um, it's good to just check them uh, mentally just to make sure they work out to be the same. And step three says write an explicit rule for this sequence. So we're going to substitute six for f of one and then three for our common difference. All right, our common difference is three. So f of n equals six plus three times n minus one. And our your turn at the bottom. This will be our last problem. Jerry collects hats. The no total number of hats in Jerry's collection depends on how many years he has been collecting them. After the first year, he has 10 hats. Each year, he's added the same number of hats to his collection. The graph shows the sequence. Write an explicit rule in function notation for, th for the arithmetic sequence. Okay, so um, they tell you he's added the same number of hats. So this means it's arithmetic. Okay, so if he adds the same number of hats to his collection. That means we have a common difference and we can go ahead and construct our explicit and recursive rule. So uh, already from the description though, we know f of one is 10, right? The first year he has 10 hats. We don't know what that, um, what that common difference is yet until we look over to the right at our graph. So the first term right here is 10, because if the input's one, the output is 10. So the uh, second term it tells us is 18. Now we can certainly check the third and fourth term, do some subtra subtraction, right, uh, between consecutive terms, and then uh, find our common difference, and to make sure it's arithmetic. So our common difference, D, let's take our second term minus our first term, and we get our common difference. Um, so we need to write an explicit rule in function notation. That's it. Uh, so our explicit rule is f of n equals 10 plus 8 times n minus 1. Uh, I just want to show you an example of this being used in, in action here. So if I wanted to know um, how many hats, I know this isn't part of the problem, but there hasn't been any examples using the the function once you create it. So uh, if I want to know how many hats does Jerry have after, um, let's say, uh, this is a number of years. So let's say after 11 years. Well, I want to say f of 11 equals 10 plus 8 times 11 minus 1. So uh, that 11 minus 1 at the very end means that I'm, gonna, I'm adding 8 10 times, right? So I start with my first term. So he starts with 10 hats. Then I'm going to add 8, and I'm going to add 8 again. Then I'm going to add 8 again. Then I'm going to add 8 again, all the way until I added it 10 total times. Uh, so that means it's going to be 10 plus 80, right? And f of 11 is... 90 hats. So after 11 years, you'll have 90 hats. Okay. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this has helped you. Uh, have a great day.